And now, Autolite presents Joan Crawford in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Everyone is so good to me. I like being here. But some of the others don't, I guess. Do you hear? They scream sometimes like that in the night. Maybe they scream because they remember things. But I remember things, too. Especially when people come out from town to see me. To bring me things. But there's nothing. Nothing that I want. They can't bring back my sister. My beautiful sister Adele. They came today. And with them they brought back memories of Adele. When we were children. The night that Mother died. The night we made the promise. Don't cry anymore, Adele. I'm afraid, Clara. We're alone. We're not alone. But if something happened to you... Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm going to take care of you. But that's what Mother said. And now she's left us, too. But Adele, Mother didn't know that she... She wouldn't have left us if she could have helped us. Promise me you won't die, Clara. And that whatever I do, you'll do. And that... And that you'll never leave me. I promise. And we'll be together always and forever. Always and forever. I promise. And for years I kept that promise. Adele and I were as close as anyone could be. We had few friends, but I didn't mind as long as she was happy. But sometimes I was frightened at the way she clung to me after we were grown. I was afraid of what would happen to her in case anything ever happened to me. And then something did happen. I met Douglas Foley. Adele liked him until she realized that I'd fallen in love with him. Then she hated him in a childish, vicious way. He tried to win her over, but it was no good. And then he asked me to marry him. And I said yes. That night, after he'd gone, Adele was waiting for me in my room. Adele? Clara! Douglas told me. Adele, you're so white. You're ill. But you promised me. But Adele, I'm not leaving you. You're going to live with us. No, it won't be the same. You promised always and forever. But we were children, Adele. You promised we'd be together. Always and forever. Adele, I... You you see, Clara, Clara, if you marry him, I'll never speak to you again. But we were married. And we believed that Adele would forgive us in time. But she didn't. She refused to see us and letters went unanswered. Then when we learned that my husband's new job was to take us to Europe, our first thought was of Adele. If she would only go with us. But when we drove to her house, she refused even to come to the door. And we were forced to sail without her. My son, Doug, was born in Europe. And I wrote Adele a long letter telling her about him. But the letter was returned unopened. When Doug was just ten, we returned to America. I went directly from the station to Adele's house. She was working in the garden when we drove up. I was shocked at her appearance. Her hair had turned almost white, and there was a strange look about her. I sent Doug to the gate to introduce himself. She looked at him in a puzzled manner. Then she saw us sitting in the car, and she turned and walked into the house. The next thing I remember was that day one month after my return home when I was put on trial for murder. For my husband's murder. Mrs. Foley, will you tell us again what happened the night of your husband's murder? 
My husband was working in the garden all day. When it began to grow dark, I called him in. But he insisted that he had something to finish. I called him several times after that. And then I became irritated and I gave up. I had my dinner alone and I went up to my bedroom. Then you do admit that you quarreled with him the night of the murder. We didn't quarrel. I was irritated, but I said nothing to my husband. I see. Your husband's death was caused by a deep, narrow wound in the vicinity of the heart. It is the opinion of this court that the instrument used might have been an ice pick. Mrs. Foley, have you any other ideas as to what might have inflicted this wound? No. Had your husband any enemies, Mrs. Foley? No. And so I was acquitted that day because of insufficient evidence... I thought Adele would come to see me during those awful days, but she didn't. I saw her in the courtroom, but she never looked my way. I believe it was about two months after the trial that my son and his friend Roy went on an all-day hiking trip to the beach. They were late getting back. It was almost dark when I saw Roy coming up the street. He was alone, and he was running. Mrs. Foley! Mrs. Foley. Roy, where's Doug? He's down at the beach with her. With whom? Your sister. My sister? Oh, for heaven's sake, Roy, will you tell me what this is all about? Well, you see, Mrs. Foley, Doug and I went down to the beach. It seemed that Roy and Doug had forgotten to take along their drinking water. And they hadn't missed it until they'd come to a very deserted strip of the beach. Maybe we can get some water at that little house over there. Funny place for a house, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Looks like nobody lives here. All the better. You can just drink out that faucet in the yard. You won't have to ask nobody. Come on. Sure run down, ain't it? Maybe the faucet isn't working. The garden's all dead. Sure it's working, see? Someone's just plain lazy then. Or maybe no one lives here. Well, sure they do. There's a mailbox. Hey, maybe there's a name on it. Look, Miss Adele Norris. That's Mom's sister. Yeah? Well, let's drop in and see her. She wouldn't even know who I was. You could tell her, couldn't you? Say, maybe she'd give us some cake or something. No, she's mad at me and Mom. Come on, let's get out of here. Say, Doc, look at all those dead leaves on the porch. Let's have a look around. No, she might come out. Oh, she can't hurt you, can she? Let's peek in the window. No, Roy. Look, Doug. The place is all upset. It's all dirty and everything. Let's look in the rest of the windows. There's no one around. Here's the kitchen. Hey, look at all the dirty dishes piled up. Say, maybe my aunt's sick. Look. Someone's coming to the window. Oh. What do you want? We wanted to see if you were all right. Go away. Don't you recognize me? No. Are you sick? No. I'm your nephew, Douglas Foley. Go away, whoever you are. I'd like to help you. Go away, I said. Mother wouldn't want me to leave you here like this. Who is your mother? I told you. Don't you remember? She's your sister. I have no sister. My sister died when I was 18. Roy, go home and get my mother. My aunt's sick. I'll climb through this window, and I'll see if there's anything I can do. You stay out of this house. Doug, let's both go. She doesn't want you here. She's sick. You go for my mother, and hurry. If you come into this house, you'll be sorry. If you... There. Did you say your name is Douglas Foley? Yes, that's right. You Douglas see, Foley is dead. Forever and ever. No, don't you see? The one who died was not... Douglas the... Foley became between two sisters. And then he died. Yeah, but I'm trying to tell you. My mother and but you... But he I... isn't dead, then I guess he'll have to die again. That's it. Yes. He'll have to die again. He'll have to die again. You'll have... Oh, yes. You're sick. You need help. I'm sick. Yes. Don't you want me to come in? Yes. Come.
come in. Douglas Foley. <laughs> 